of Grace and Grace Congregational Church and the Grace of God. All are welcome, regardless of where they are on their faith journey or where they are in their personal lives. You are welcome among us.
Let us be together in our call to worship. Lord, you call us together that we may share our faith stories around the fire of your love. We come to hear the word, to feel the presence of the Holy. The Lord works in mysterious ways that surprise us when we are open to it. We come together, each bringing a part of God's redeeming grace to share. Come on, let us share the warmth of the fires of God's love together. life in ways Jesus taught us, and we give thanks for that. Thank you, Lord, for all the gentle hints, the new thoughts we experience in our lives, for the casual phrases uttered by others that turn out to be prophetic for us. During this hour, open us to your word, however expressed. Open us to realize that your breath of life that you gave us at our birth was just the beginning of so many gifts that you give us always. Help us to be able to better sense your presence with us and to let your spirit dwell with us always. May it be so. Let us be together in our prayer of confession. Lord, hear us as we open our hearts to you and confess that we have fallen short of living as you would have us live. Lord, too often we let our fears rule our actions. We come before and we have status quo as it feels safer than reaching out to those who are in need. Help us to be more open to your guidance and accepting the strength and courage. busyness as an excuse for not taking the time to sit quietly with you. Help us to find ourselves to be able to hear you, feel your pulse as well as our own, and to be more able to believe you find us worthy, regardless of our shortfalls each day. Hear us now as we ask in silence. does not expect us to be perfect. That's not going to ever happen. We weren't created perfectly, and we will never be perfect. God wants us to grow. It's a life-changing set of events that God is looking for in us. Our growth is accepting it and taking it to heart, that we are given free choice for a reason. Not so that we can constantly fail, but that we can learn to do better with God's help. If we could only but see this relationship as a partnership in our living life. Mike says, the Father's heart beats with love for the prodigal son. Know that you are forgiven, loved as a child of God, who is still and always will be growing. Amen. Let us gather and 
sharing the peace of Christ together. The peace of the risen Christ is with you. Let us join together in the God.
Okay, well, first of all, I got a few things here. Um, and everybody listen, because it's very germane to uh, the sermon. Okay, this is, uh, this is my pet rock, and I had custody of it today. Um, so is there someone who would like to care for it? Well, I just, I just want to make sure, don't let it change. <laughs> yes, it's sparkling. So, um, can anybody in this group here, can you tell me what a pulse is? What the definition of a pulse is? very reasonable because music is a steady stream of many different kinds of pulses. In engineering we call that a pulse train and the combination of all those pulses are what we call music in that form. But the definition of pulse is simply it is a packet of energy that has a beginning and an end. That's it. It could be any length of time, it doesn't have to be repetitive. It's just a packet of energy. It is different from an impulse. Don't confuse the two. An impulse is something completely different. I'm not going there today because it's a page and a half of mathematics. So, <laughs> so I have, you, you raised about the pulse. Would you like to see what your pulse looks like? If you put your finger in it and then hold it horizontally and give it a chance, it will plot the, hold it horizontally, and in a minute you'll be able to see. Can you describe what it looks like, Ellen? What a pulse looks like? It, it isn't just a spike, right? It's got width, right? Yes, there's a width to it. There's a shape to it. No, it's not even just a width. It's got a shape. It's got a rise time, and then it, it kind of looks like this a little bit, right? Right? Well, that's kind of an averaging. That's, that's an inexpensive device. It just averages it. We actually have multiple pulses in our heart because we've got, you know, two sides of the heart that work rhythmically together, and then each one has a pulse. Now, why would I be talking about this in church? Whose pulse might we be interested in besides our own? Right. That's pretty audacious to be able to say, I want to, you know, listen to God's pulse. But I can't find, personally, I can't find any way of expressing it other than that when we are in a synchronicity, synchronous with God in peace, being at peace. And I'll be talking about that in the sermon. But um, has my has my rock changed? Has my pet rock changed at all? Oh okay. <laughs> I'm very I'm very glad. Now what what would happen uh, do you recognize what that kind of rock is? Can you tell? It's sandstone. It's, it's sandstone. Layers and layers of sand that have been packed for, you know, millions of years. So what would, I, what would happen if I hit that one again? Shatter. Right, shatter. Turn back into sand again, right? That's a pulse. That's what happens if you hit this with a pulse of energy, like a hammer, which is a short piece of energy, and then it stops, and it would deteriorate. So what do we call this right now in our life? Status quo? Static? Engineering terms, we call it steady state. 
something we like a lot, right? We really want to know exactly what tomorrow is going to bring, right? It's a whole lot easier living if we know what's going to happen tomorrow, you know? Maybe we don't even want to get up tomorrow, you know, that kind of thing, right? But we don't have that luxury in this world, do we? We don't know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow. So this is where being in touch with God's pulse is very helpful. So with that, Ellen, I believe you are reading. Please. Good morning. I would invite you to look at the cover of your bulletin. This is the Potter's story. The Hebrew scripture reading is from Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. The, wor the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will announce my words to you. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something on the wheel. But the vessel that he was making of clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter. So he remade it into another vessel, as it pleased the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Can I not, O house of Israel, deal with you as this potter does, declares the Lord. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. May God shape our understanding of these words. Let's be in prayer. May the words of my lips and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The point I was trying to make with the kids, that's what the script says here, is that we really like steady state. We really like sameness, but we don't live in that world. The world we live in is filled with pulses all the time. Some of them are bigger than others. Uh, there was one about 65 million years ago, which the entire world took notice of. You know, an asteroid decided to you know, go to Cancun. And I ended up, you know, creating uh, a mass extinction. Three quarters of life was destroyed short period of time. That's quite a pulse. It had a beginning and it had an end and life was very different after it. We have pulses in our lives. Learning is a pulse, a constant train of pulses when we learn, right? We learn something new and then we use it to build on something else and then we get another thought. Now, you know, I've been sharing with you for the last three prior sermons, and a couple of people have noticed I see a pattern to one sermon after another. You're right, there is. And it's about how do we move from being separate from God and no understanding of it to being in peace and in sync with God in our everyday life. And that's a journey. And I've told you about how when I was 27 months old, I realized that there was a power that was greater than me. I knew there was a God because I got saved from a monster. Couldn't rationalize it the way I do today, but it was a monumental moment for me. Well. I'm all right with, ma'am, I'm all right with the sound. Okay. <laughs> I actually don't mind the sound of babies. It's a beautiful sound. I, you know, she wasn't screaming. In any event, so, okay. You know, six years later, I'm in Grand Rapids with my uncle and aunt, and my uncle's an engineer too. There's a dozen of them in my family tree. Um, and he gives me a, kit, a kit, and he knows I like building kits. This is a kid, you know, I can't read well at all. I 
build kits that throw the directions away. I can't read them anyway. Why? Don't, don't need them. I look at the kit and I can assemble stuff. And this was a, a little electronics kit. It had about a dozen parts in it. It was a single transistor radio, AM radio. Now this was really a big deal. This was, you know, right? this was 1955, right? Okay? The transistor's only a year old, right? And so I got to the thing and he showed me the schematic and I just looked at the board and said, oh, I know, you know. And an hour later, I put in the D battery and lo and behold, I twisted the door. And there was a radio in my ear, a little earbud, right? And I'm listening to the radio. This was magic. You know, radios back then, you know, were these large boxes with honking power supplies and 10 or 15 tubes in it, uh, you know, to, to make the sound. And here, this is a little three by five card, you know, and a battery. And it, and it does the same thing. This is quite remarkable to me. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of marveling at it. And my aunt looks over my shoulder and she says, you've got a knack for this. You've got a knack for this. There it was at eight, unable to read, very willful in my mind because I could see things that other people couldn't see at my age. I was a train wreck, really. Now my parents, you know, they had to say, oh, that's wonderful. Everything I did, oh, that's wonderful. I knew it was no good. You know, yeah, I was three and I had a nail and hammer and three pieces of wood and I nailed it together. I was looking at a picture of the, you know, the Queen Mary and then I was building a boat and I looked at the wood and I looked at the picture, I knew it was no good. <laughs> Don't tell me, oh, that's great. That's terrible, you know? My aunt, she's not, she doesn't have that responsibility. She said to me, you've got to back to this. That turned out to be prophetic because all of a sudden here it was at the eight and I had a focus. And I started to work harder at learning how to read. I'm dyslexic, it was a trial, but I got myself up to second grade or third grade by the time I was in seventh grade. And, and even four years later, I'm doing electronic or electrical work where the, as an assistant to an electrician, where the more rotund guys couldn't get underneath in the crawl space or up in the attic area, I was doing the electrical work. I had a focus, and you know what that focus is? That's purpose. That, you've got a knack for this, was a prophetic voice, and it steered my life. And it may be, to a large degree, what I am today. I had constant pulses from God. And I could feel them. And you know, one of the things I used to do as a kid was I used to sail. And you know what? When you're out, I had my little beetle cat down in the cave. I'm out all by myself, and it's peaceful. And it's like I'm working with God. I've got the sheep, and I've got the rudder, and the wind, and you know, we're doing this together. There was a sense of togetherness in me, a peace. And then, you know, in my 20s, right, I flew. And I'd be, you know, you know, 8,000 feet, you know, VFR on top, quiet as a mouse up there, except for the roar of the engines on either side. But otherwise, peaceful and quiet. And the only pulses that were coming in would generally be, you know, Air ATC telling me you've got traffic crossing 5,000 above you left to right. Thank you. It's nice to know that somebody's looking out for me too. So there was a peace there. And it, I enjoyed that time tremendously to have that sense of peace.
peace. So, and even the Bible says, right, this passage in Matthew that says, you know, do not be like the Pharisees who pray on the corner so that everyone can see them. Go into your closet and pray to God in private. Now, we put a great big layer on it about, oh, it's all about the hubris, you know, the Pharisees' hubris. Eh, that's probably got some validity, you know, validity to it. But there's a more important piece of knowledge in that scripture. And that is when we go and we get in the closet, so to speak, to pray to God, first of all, we got to be honest with God because God already knows what's the point of trying to lie to God. Right? But more importantly, we have closed out the noise of the world. We have drawn a door. No more pulses coming from other people. They're just yours and God. Now, how can we get in sync? Take the time to get in sync. It's that passage, when I came to understand that it's about being able to find peace with God, is about turning off the noise that exists and allowing just the peace of God to be with you. And then you find a way find a way to turn this part of our brain off, the medulla, that's constantly giving us pulses. And, you know, I know I was there. Also in my 20s, you know, like the hymn says, when, you know, we grow up and then we leave to go out and find where demons dwell. Well, I didn't have to go far. I knew right where my demons dwell, right here in the back of my head, in the medulla of oh God. That's where they're, that's where the demons are all of our demons. What I had to figure out was where my authority ended and God's authority began. As if here's a sphere of God's authority and here's a sphere of my authority. Okay, they're touching. So where's that boundary? So the engineer in me said, I gotta go find where that boundary is. And all I did was find fuzz. I didn't find any boundaries. I would be many years before I realized that one was inside of the other. There was no boundary between me and God. I'm part of God, and God is part of me. There is no boundary here. It's a, just a recognition of whether we are a part of God and willing to accept that authority in our life. That's our choice. And that's where faith comes. Because if you want to have faith, you've got to choose to have it. God gave us free will. And you can choose not to have faith. I would venture to say I'm not an atheist, so and I am probably as far from being an atheist as people can get. But I suspect an atheist says, I don't know if there's a God or not, but nobody's got control over me but me. That's it. But pretty much tantamount to what being an atheist says. There's no other authority. Oh, wait a minute, we, we elect presidents and we appoint judges and we hire police, okay. But we're choosing to do that. It's not something that, you know, existentially governs me. I can vote those people out, so to speak. So, our faith is our choice. And are we going to accept God's gift? And when we choose to accept God's gift, then the synchronicity with God becomes easy for God. I mean, God knows who we are. God knows, you know, what our pulse is. And he works hard, in my opinion, my experience, works hard to match us so that things match up. 
There's, my father was a railroader. I can count on the Vermont Railway, the freight outbound for Bennington at 10 minutes of nine every morning. Same engine, I can hear it in my house. I, when I'm giving the, the sermon in the, in the chapel, I go, oh, it's 10 minutes and nine, I gotta shorten my sermon. Right on time, it's a pulse. Now I choose to hear that as my father saying, I'm with you, my late father, railroad. It's music to my ears. Now, I'm making that choice, all right? But the point is that I can feel, it makes me feel at peace when I hear that. There's a comfort to that more than that. If we create these items that allow God to work with us, simple things, all of a sudden, God's got a path to give us more than we need asking for on a regular basis. This is what the concept of pulses is all about. These are, each of these growth moments are pulses that we receive. And if we receive them in a way that we can accept them, because we accept the fact that God is in us and we are in God, then we get to grow. That authority that God has is benevolent loving, gracious, redeeming, forgiving. We're not perfect and we never will be. But if we're willing to listen to God, then you know, we've got a wonderful life. So with that, I leave you the peace of Christ as an ending to this service. May the peace of Christ, may the pulse of God be with you all. And let us join together in singing the second hymn, which is in your bulletin. I heard the voice of Jesus say. There are times, Lord, when we feel that the world has gotten out of hand, that feels like being twisted, a log being twisted around and splintered. This makes us feel a bit uneasy, to say the least. We want the world to be different. The reality, though, is we are the ones that need to be different. To try to see the world through your eyes, and to do that, we need a lot of help from you. Help us to be more sensitive to your presence, that we may be witness to your perspectives in life, and to morally, more truly trust in you, and likewise be open to be your hands and your feet as you need us to be in this world. Grant us your courage and your guidance in and all that we do to make your kingdom a reality. We know that there are many who struggle with illness and resource issues. Move your angels near them to help and to comfort your people. Hear us as we lift up in silence 
these that we know are in need of your love and care. In the sound of a child is the knowledge that's that where we all started. In your grace, we ask you to hear our own needs and our own weaknesses. In our silence, strengthen us that we may be more open to you, learning to trust in you more deeply, follow thee more nearly, and love thee more dearly by loving others. Now hear us, Lord, as we pray with one voice the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
the world may produce, may our pulse be in sync with the pulse of the peace of Christ offered to us in our lives. The peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. <laughs>